Okay, so you've probably heard the word gingivitis before, maybe during a toothpaste commercial or during a dental checkup, and it sounds like something minor, maybe just like a little gum irritation. But here's the thing, gingivitis is actually the starting point of something serious, which could eventually lead to tooth loss. And it's tricky because it often creeps in silently, there's no pain, no discomfort, just slow, subtle changes happening beneath the surface. And that's what makes it dangerous because you don't notice it until it's already taken hold. And in this video, I'm gonna explain what gingivitis actually is, how it starts, and what are the signs that you need to be looking out for. Oh, and by the way, my name is Jimmy. I'm a dentist and I help you understand dental health the easy way so you don't have to learn it the hard way in the chair with an expensive bill that could have been avoided. So let's get started. Okay, so first let's break down the word gingivitis. So gingiva means gums and itis means inflammation. So the word gingivitis literally means inflammation of the gums, which sounds simple, right? A little redness, a little irritation, no big deal. But this is something that most people get wrong. You might think it's a little gum irritation, it'll go away on its own, and it's normal to see a little blood when you're brushing, but inflammation is your body's response system or your body's alarm. So it means that your immune system is fighting something, it's reacting to something, and in this case, it's bacteria. And specifically, it's the toxins bacteria release when they settle on your teeth. So imagine your gums as the collar on your shirt, you know, a snug fit or snug around your teeth. And when the inflammation sets in, that collar starts to look red, it starts to look puffy, it starts to look loose, and maybe it bleeds when you brush, and that's the warning light. And this is your body trying to fight off the threat. So the blood vessels in your gums expand, and white blood cells flood the area, fluid starts to leak into the tissues, so basically, this is inflammation. And although it's meant to protect you, it can actually lead to damage if it's left unchecked. And the longer this alarm stays on, what happens is your gums start to look swollen, they might start to pull away, and that tight collar then all of a sudden starts to have a loose fit. And the early inflammation weakens the attachment between your teeth and your gums. And therefore, what starts off as small could actually be the first stage of chronic gum disease. But the good news is, if you catch it early, this is still reversible. Okay, so your mouth is full of bacteria, both good and bad. And when you eat, especially when you eat carbs or sugar, bacteria feed on these leftovers and create a sticky film called plaque. And plaque builds up around your teeth and your gums every single day, even a few hours after brushing. So plaque is soft at first. You can brush it or floss it away, but if it sits there for too long, especially overnight, it hardens into something called tartar. And tartar cannot be removed at home by yourself. That needs a professional cleaning. Tartar builds up most often around the gum line, behind the lower front teeth, and in hard to reach areas between the molars. And then your gums start reacting. Not because of the plaque itself, but because of the toxins that are being released by the bacteria in the plaque. And here's the thing, gingivitis is painless. So usually there's no sharp discomfort, there's no visible swelling that you can feel, and there's no symptoms that shout, hey, something's wrong here. And the gums may beat slightly after brushing or flossing, and often that's usually the only sign. Unfortunately, many people dismiss this sign as being normal. And you might brush and see a little pink in the sink and think, this is just from brushing too hard and therefore most people never realize that they have gingivitis until it's too late and maybe one day you floss and you notice a little blood and your gums might look a little puffier than usual and this is where it starts to slip under the radar now plaque is more than just food and bacteria it's a living biofilm so it's a structured colony of bacteria that protect themselves with this sticky slimy layer and this biofilm acts like a shield so it's highly resistant to your immune system, to saliva, and even certain or too many mouth. So these bacteria cooperate, communicate, and adapt. And what they do is they cling onto the surfaces of your teeth and your gums, like glue. And once they settle in, they start producing toxins and chemicals that irritate your tissues. So even if your body recognizes the threat, it cannot destroy the bacteria directly. Instead, what it does is it reacts with inflammation. So redness, swelling, bleeding, and your immune system is trying to fight back, but the biofilm is stubborn. And as the inflammation continues, enzymes are being released by your immune cells to start damage to the tissues that they're trying to protect. And this is known as collateral damage. And it's one of the key drivers of gum recession. Then the longer the biofilm is left on your teeth, the more toxic it becomes, releasing acids and byproducts that further irritate the gums and begin to break down the soft tissue. Therefore, even people with a strong immune system and a decent oral hygiene can still develop gingivitis if that biofilm isn't being disrupted regularly through brushing, flossing, professional cleanings. Now let's talk about who's most likely to develop gingivitis. And spoiler alert, it's not just people who don't brush their teeth. Yes, poor oral hygiene can increase your risk of gingivitis, but gingivitis can still affect people with clean looking teeth too, 
especially when there are other risk factors at play. So for example, smokers and vapors. Now the use of tobacco affects the blood flow to the gums and the result is it makes it harder for your body to fight off infections and for your gums to heal. And also diabetes, especially when blood sugar is uncontrolled, diabetes weakens your immune response and that makes it harder for your gums to heal, to fight off bacterial invasion and makes healing just basically more difficult. Also hormonal shifts, so things like menopause, pregnancy, puberty, menstruation, they can affect how your body reacts to plaque. And these shifts can make your gums more sensitive, more prone to inflammation, to bleeding, even when your hygiene is consistent. And even certain medications, things like antihistamines, antidepressants, or even certain medications that reduce the saliva production, because without enough saliva to neutralize or to wash away the bacteria, plaque ends up building up faster and becomes more irritating. And even things like chronic stress, because if your body is constantly going to be under stress, it's going to release cortisol, and that increases inflammation. And stress also affects your habit. So you might floss less, you might grind your teeth more, you might eat more sugar. So even if you're brushing twice a day, these factors can still put you at risk. And therefore, gingivitis can basically affect anyone. And it's not just about brushing or flossing. It's about your whole body, your whole health, your environment, and how consistently you care for your mouth. So how do you know if you actually have gingivitis and what are the signs that you should be looking out for at home? But first, we need to understand what healthy gums are supposed to look like. So they should be firm and pale pink. They should be tightly hugging your teeth uh, like a well-fitted collar. They should be free from any tenderness or swelling and they should not be bleeding when, you're, when they're being brushed or flossed. Now in contrast, gingivitis changes the feel and the appearance of your gums in subtle but important ways. So things I would look out for is redness. Now that's the first thing you might notice. Uh, maybe instead of the light or the pale pink, you might notice your gums becoming a little darker, especially around the gum line maybe more red, more purplish even in some spots, and that's due to the increased blood flow due to inflammation. And the second thing I would look out for is swelling. So healthy gums are supposed to be firm and flat, and healthy gums might look a little puffier, especially in between teeth where plaque tends to gather and accumulate. And you might also notice that the gum edge might start to look a little more rounded. And the third thing I would look out for is a shiny surface. So instead of a matte, stippled texture like an orange peel, inflamed gums usually appear glossy or overly smooth. And this is another sign of fluid buildup and irritation around the tissue. And the fourth sign I would look out for is bleeding when brushing or flossing. And this is a big one. If you notice blood in the sink, don't ignore it because even a small amount is a sign that your gums are irritated and inflamed. And it's not just from brushing too hard. This ha usually happens because the gums are inflamed and they have fragile blood vessels that rupture easily. And the fifth thing I would look out for is persistent bad breath. And this is also known as halitosis in dentistry. So this happens because the bacteria in the plaque release sulfur compounds and other byproducts which create that bad smell. You'd usually notice that even after you brush or you floss, your breath may not feel fresh. And the other thing I would look out for is a receding gum line in some cases. And while this is more common in later stages of gum disease, early gum recession would, can indicate that gingivitis had started and inflammation had repeatedly weakened the gum's grip around the tooth. Now here's a simple way to self-check at home. So stand in front of a mirror in good lighting and lift your upper lip and gently stretch your lower lip and look at your gum margins and that's the edge where your gums and your teeth meet. Is there any puffiness? Is there any redness? Are they symmetrical? Is there bleeding when you run a floss between each tooth? And if you answered yes to any of these, you could be dealing with early signs of gingivitis. And recognizing any of these visual cues might be your best shot at reversing the process before it's too late. And in fact, that's what this next video is going to be about five early signs of gingivitis that most people miss. And I'll show you specific examples and explain why each one matters. Okay, so let's talk about why treating and catching gingivitis early matters so much. So you see gingivitis is the first stage of gum disease, but it's also the only reversible stage. So that means your gums can fully heal if you take action now. And at this point, the damage is limited to the soft tissue and the bones and the ligaments that are holding your teeth in place. They're still healthy and there's no permanent loss yet. But if gingivitis continues unchecked, the story changes. The inflammation begins to break down the attachment between your teeth and your gums, and the pockets between your tooth and your gums deepen. So bacteria and toxins move deeper below the gum line, and your immune system shifts into overdrive. So that's when we cross into periodontitis, which is a more advanced destructive stage of gum disease. And that's when you might notice things like bone loss, gum recession, loose teeth or shifting teeth, persistent bad breath, and even in some cases you might end up losing your teeth. And unlike gingivitis, periodontitis isn't reversible but only manageable and once bone is lost it doesn't go back easily 
and once soft tissue detaches, it takes clinical intervention to restore. Therefore, catching gingivitis early doesn't just improve your oral health, but can help you avoid the pain, the cost, the time required to manage advanced gum disease later on. And the impact here goes beyond your mouth because gum disease has been linked to systemic health problems, things like heart disease, diabetes complications, and low birth weights in pregnancy. And if you notice any of these signs that we talked about earlier, bleeding gums, puffiness, redness, bad breath, Here's what you can start with today. So let's walk through the steps. The first thing is brushing twice a day. So do it right. First, use a soft bristle toothbrush and a fluoride toothpaste and angle your toothbrush 45 degrees to the gum line and do it in small circular motions. And the other thing is don't forget to floss. So when you use a toothbrush, you're only cleaning 60% of your tooth structure. So there's 40% that's still left unchecked. So make sure you try and clean in between your teeth as well because a lot of uh, plaque and bacteria hide there in between and under the gum line so if you struggle also with the string floss what i suggest is maybe try using a water flosser or a floss pick and also make sure you stay hydrated because your saliva is your body's natural defense system and it helps wash away bacteria and neutralize acids and if you have a dry mouth from things like medications mouth breathing or dehydration you're at a higher risk of developing gingivitis and also make sure you eat a gum healthy diet so focus on uh, foods rich in vitamin c calcium and antioxidants, so crunchy fruits and vegetables, things like apples and carrots, they can help mechanically clean your teeth and also make sure you avoid any sugary snacks that fuel uh, plaque and bacteria. And here's something else to keep in mind. So even if your technique is perfect, you might still miss some areas. And that's why routine dental checkups are necessary and they can help catch problems before they escalate and become irreversible. And if you're also wondering how gingivitis can be passed between people through kissing, sharing utensils, close contact, you might wanna check out my other video here. And thank you for watching.